Deuteronomy 26, verse 16. This day the Lord your God commands you to observe these statutes and judgments. Therefore you shall be careful to observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. Today you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments and his judgments and that you will and that you will obey his voice. Also today, the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people, just as he promised you that you should keep all his commandments and that he will set you high above all nations which he has made in praise and name and in honor and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. So today, God expects from us the same standard as he expected from the nation of Israel. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity of meeting and reading from your holy word. Just like we sang, it will stand no matter what happens in this world because it is your word. We thank you for the opportunity you give us to proclaim that word and to share into this dying world your life, the eternal life beside you through your sacrificial death on that cross. In your son's name we pray, amen. So I'm just trying to mix things up here. And I just made a statement that is confusing. And I'm going to explain what I mean by today God expects from us the same standard and mission as he required from the nation of Israel. And no, I'm not saying that we are saved through works of the law of Moses. We are not saved that way. But God expects from us that live in the dispensation of grace to act and live under the same principles as those that lived under the law. Why? Because God is, he is not confusing. He doesn't make confusion. But, you know, I'm having all of you on edge. I feel tension. <laughs> I'm just enjoying the opportunity that pastor is far gone and I'm just going to overthrow the church. No. <laughs> no, that, that is not it. Um, I will explain and you will see my point, but bear with me. So what was the purpose of the law? Let's turn to Romans chapter 7. What was the purpose of the law? Why, why did it? Why did God institute it? So Romans chapter 7, we're going to start reading in verse 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, You shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me and by it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15.
1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. First Corinthians fifteen fifty six, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So, what was the purpose of the law? God gave the law to show man what was perfect. How was, what was the standard that he accept, accepted? And therefore, the law showed us man. That we are sinners. We fail. We can't obey the law. We do, you know, we fall short of God's glory every time. Day, day in and day out. But, as a Jew, you could live life um, what they called to be blameless towards the law. And what was what is that? Let's turn to Philippians Chapter 3. We want to thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you and consider you a part of our family, just as the people attending in person. We want to ask that if this message touched you in any way, that you like this video, share it with your friends and family, and then also subscribe. This way, you will get notified when we come out with other videos that may help bless you and others. Thank you again for joining us, and until next time, God bless and keep looking up.